Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Ledette. I'm an Associate Professor of Disease Ecology and Epidemiology. If we can learn more about the tick, that will help everyone prevent themselves from suffering from a tick-borne disease. For years, I've been talking with folks about ticks and how to prevent disease, um, how to know about their enemy, the tick being the enemy. And uh, I've developed what I think is an easy way to think about the whole picture of disease, tick-borne disease. And I'll highlight Lyme disease, but in most cases, the diseases share the same parts. And I've developed an equation for Lyme disease or tick-borne disease and many tick-borne diseases. And this equation breaks apart the, the critical variables or critical parts of the disease, right? So you have to have all these parts to equal disease. Um, those parts include the tick. If you don't have the tick, you will not have tick borne diseases. With the tick, you need the actual host. Many tick-borne diseases require uh, an animal or vertebrate host in nature, and that's where the pathogen, the bacteria, the virus hangs out and lives and then gets to you somehow through the tick. Then you need the pathogen, the virus, the bacteria, the protozoan. If you don't have that, you can have ticks, but they're not transmitting anything. You can have hosts. And then you can have the tick the host, the bacteria, but without humans, you don't have disease. All humans could be eliminated from this planet and the causative agent of Lyme disease, Borrelia burgdorferi, would still be out there circulating between hosts and ticks. It just wouldn't be a concern to humans. So with the tick, the host, or the, the reservoir animal, the vertebral reservoir, the bacteria or pathogen, and humans, all those potentially produce disease. Um, so when we're thinking about tackling or eliminating the disease part of that equation, it's taking apart um, each of the subcomponents or variables um, that add up to disease. And if we can do that through one or multiple of those variables, we have a better chance at, at reducing or eliminating any disease in humans. Okay, so looking at our equation, it can be generally used for many tick-borne diseases. Often when we think about tick-borne diseases, we, we focus on Lyme because it is the most common tick-borne disease in North America. So let's look at that equation and break apart each of those variables that potentially lead to the disease. The first variable is the tick, right? And with Lyme disease, not all ticks spread Lyme disease. However, ticks can spread multiple diseases. So insert the tick of the day there and we can talk about what disease they spread and the components they spread. When it comes to Lyme disease, we're mainly speaking about the black-legged tick or the deer tick. So that's part of that equation there. The next part of the equation is the reservoir host. Now that differs from humans. Humans are not reservoir hosts. And why are we not reservoir hosts? Well, think about this. How many ticks do you have feeding on you at one point in time? I would say no right now. Um, but often it is a single tick. And the likelihood that that tick is gonna bite you when you have Lyme disease, pick up the pathogen, drop off, somewhere where it can then change into the next life stage, the nymph, the adult, and then find another ho human or host is not gonna happen. We're often considered dead end hosts. When that tick gets on you, that tick's not gonna survive another day. But in nature, reservoir hosts are these small animals or vertebrates, medium sized animals or vertebrates when we talk about Lyme disease that have a lot of ticks feeding on them all times of the year become infected and carry that infection for their life or a period of time where they, they can reinfect other ticks, other non-infected ticks. Because not all ticks carry disease out there. And those disease rates can, can range, right? There's some diseases in nature that are very rare. Less than 1% of ticks are carrying the pathogen. There are more common diseases in nature like Lyme disease where in some areas, three quarters of the ticks can be carrying that pathogen. And that's all determined by these small animals with Lyme disease, where we think mainly about the white-footed mouse or chipmunks. Um, birds as well can be reservoirs. And they're basically the vending machine for the tick-borne disease, right? You've got the ticks feeding on the vending machine, picking up whatever, they've, whatever that vending machine has, and then taking that and giving it to somebody else. Moving across that equation, you got the pathogen. Remember with Lyme disease, it is a bacterial spirochete. It's a very unique spirochete. Um, I don't want to go into depth about how unique it is because it would bore most people. But when we think about other tick-borne diseases, that pathogen can differ, right? The Borrelia spirochete is a bacteria that differs from viruses, that differs from protozoans, that differs from worms. I don't know if you know, but some ticks can transmit worms to people and other organisms. And then we go on to the humans. The humans are the last part of that equation. You've got the tick, 
the reservoir, the pathogen, and humans. Now, humans are a really unique creature, as we all know. And it's not just humans being there, but it's what humans are doing that are part of that equation. So you can be, go a little more in depth. Think about a human being that lives in a high rise in the middle of a city that never sees green space. They're, they, they're not gonna really have increased risk for disease. So the likelihood that they're gonna get disease is very low versus a human that loves camping, loves hiking, loves outdoors. So behavior plays a part of that equation. It's not just humans being there, but it's also the behavior of the human that leads to that disease status at the end of that equation.